This video brought to you by Fruit Stickers. Fruit Stickers, they're a pain, so stick them all over your lunchbox. Alright, settle in folks, because today we're going to be talking about bananas. Why? No reason, just thought it'd be a fun story to tell. Alright, now cast your mind back to the year 2003. Unless you weren't alive back then, in which case, I don't know, be older I guess. Anyway, 2003, the year of Return of the King, take this to your grave and Ratchet and Clank 2. Times were tough in the banana industry, and the top scientific minds from each company were in a race to develop the next big idea that would bring bananas back into popular culture. Finally, the genius representatives from Bonita Bananas had the idea that would revolutionize the industry. I mean, I guess that's how it happened. Honestly, I can't think of a better explanation as to how this outcome came to be. That outcome, of course, being Bonita Quest Game On. That's right, you read the title correctly. Bonita Quest Game On is a flash game developed by someone somewhere who is somehow affiliated with Turners and Growers. Thanks to my exclusive contact within Turners and Growers, Thanks Dad! I was able to get a little bit more information to hopefully piece together how this bizarre venture came to be. Alright, so, Turners and Growers, or TNG as they're known as now, are basically the huge New Zealand business in charge of getting all the delicious fresh produce like fruit and vegetables from the people that grow them and onto supermarket shelves. The company has been around for over 120 years, so that's condensing a lot of history and information into one sentence. Moving on. Bonita is a brand of bananas grown in Ecuador, which is like primo banana growing country. The Naboa family are the owners in charge of growing these particular bananas in Ecuador, so Bonita is their brand. In the early 2000s, they were massive shareholders and turners and growers and partnered with them to create a promotion with the intent of selling their new Bananito Bananas. Bananito Bananas were smaller pre-packed bananas that were ideal for kids as opposed to, you know, a regular big old yellow curved boy. So it may not have been a banana scientist like I theorised earlier, but somewhere along the line, a group of people, most likely a marketing executive, came up with the idea for a promotion in which you would collect four stickers off banana bunches, chuck them in an envelope with five bucks, and send the sucker off somewhere with the associated application form, and a few weeks later, BAM! You got a copy of the game in the mail. I remember I was in primary school at the time, I think it must have been about six or seven, and people would play this on the school computer every lunchtime, and it would blow our tiny seven-year-old minds. Remember, this is back in the days where not everyone had a computer or even a cell phone. Nearly every kid had a copy of this game, but I remember there was a disclaimer in the promotion that said that anyone who worked for or had a family member who worked for Turners and Growers wasn't eligible to enter the competition. But I really wanted a copy, and I remember one day after school, my friend William's mum came to pick him up, and she had a copy of the game for him, and I was so upset I just went and sat and had a little seven year old cry because not being able to have a computer game was the worst thing in the world to me back then. So my friend's mum came over and gave me a chocolate bar and like a gullible sop all kids are at that age. That fixed everything. Thanks Linda. Plus I'm pretty sure Christmas that year we got our first PlayStation so I was pretty sorted for gaming from then on out. I don't remember how or when but we were obviously given a copy from someone at some stage but it's basically sat on a shelf collecting dust for 15 years until now. Alright let's see what we got here. Oh good system requirements and oh <laughs> wow Windows 98. Macintosh? Well, no duh, you need a CD-ROM drive. Let's just grab the disc out. Oh! Oh! What's wrong with his face? Why does he look like that? His eyes aren't like that in the game, and they look normal on the box art. It's like he just realized what game he's in. Ugh. Alrighty, let's see what we're in for. <laughs> oh boy! Oh dear. A surprise to no one, but the Elder Scrolls, this is not. Also, yes, you will constantly be restricted to this tiny box in the middle of the yellow screen. Well, for starters, you can choose to play as either a boy or a girl. Huh. Point for gender diversity, despite literally being the exact same character aside from slightly different hair. Uh, the girl is Bonita, as in the banana brand, which is Spanish for beautiful, clearly. And the boy is Bananito, which I assumed was just a play on words before finding out about the baby bananas. Oh, I get it. So that would make this little guy the younger brother of Bonita. Whoa. Already the deep, complex lore of this game franchise is turning out to be more complicated than I expected. Okay, so the first time I played this before making this video, I didn't bother to read the instructions like an idiot, as I assumed you just run and jump and shoot bananas. But there is actually an objective, kinda? So run, jump, eat bananas, whatever. There's more information on the website, but we'll get to that later. Starting the game says it all. 2D cartoon aesthetic, janky character models, terrible collision detection, music that loops indefinitely, and the sound effects. Oh, the sound effects! Do not play this with sounds for longer than a minute or you will go insane. Every time you jump, it plays the same stock bounce sound effect. And every time you grab a banana, the character shouts, Bonita! Bonita! 
Bonita! Bonita! Doesn't matter who you're playing as, they're identical. No, it doesn't make sense for them to be shouting out the girl's name, but whatever, $5 kids game. Uh, what else? Uh, so contrary to what you may think, there is no actual time limit. Sure, there's a timer, but it only acts as bonus points to when you finish a stage. Uh, banana bunches give you points that add to your banana total, which can be used to heal you. Enemies and traps cause damage. Get hit a certain number of times, and you lose a life. You know, the usual. You can use your banana total to heal yourself, which is supposed to take 10 bananas, but for some reason, it would never subtract any from my total, so I guess unlimited heals for me. Oh, and the bananas you shoot are unlimited too. Yeah, they're going for the Angry Birds route of literally wasting precious resources as a means to get the precious resource. What? You're pretty much under a constant barrage from rejected cereal mascots trying to take away your bananas. If you're too close to an enemy, then you can't hit them for no reason and you will straight up fall through objects. Look, I'm getting too deep into this. It's not a very well made game by any standards. I got to level 2, which is further than anyone in my primary school level got. Take that 7 year old classmates, which introduced death pits, giant sod off spiders, and WHAT THE HECK IS THAT?! WHAT IS THAT?! WHAT THE F*** IS THAT?! You know, I had to ask myself a couple of times while playing this, is this racist? But no, this is nowhere near as bad as some other banana companies overseas when it comes to racially insensitive marketing. I'm Chiquita Banana, and I've come to say that you really shouldn't treat a fellow man this way. Credit where credit is due. For a budget title that was literally a promotional tie-in, there was still a fair bit of effort put into other aspects of the product. For example, the art style is nice, simple, but colourful and vibrant. Although it's not great to play, at least the effort was made to create a finished product with platforming sections, different enemy types and obstacles that require various ways of progressing. It's just too bad that it was all spent on this. Seriously though, Props to the people in charge of this for at least having basic comprehension of game design. It's more than a lot of games had in those days. Now, the last thing you may have noticed that's on the disc is something I've neglected to mention until near the end of the video. The View High Scores section. You see, this whole Bonita Quest thing was a promotion within a promotion where upon finishing the game you could upload your high scores to an official website and go in the draw to win things like an original Xbox. Mm, no thanks. Or the chance to play the game live on What Now? Oh hey, I remember What Now? It was that bizarre kid show that used to play on Sunday mornings. It's still going? Anyway, the website has long since closed down, but thanks to the incredibly awesome Internet Archive Wayback Machine, you can literally go through most of the entire 2003 website. And let me tell you guys, there is a lot of stuff here. From high scores to free downloads, which mostly consist of scary printable cutout masks, and even a free downloadable demo. Sadly, this function isn't available, which is a shame, otherwise the game's glory could be reignited to live another day. Not quite sure what the demo was though, the game only has 8 levels, it was probably just the first level and honestly I quit during the second level when the giant spider showed up so you wouldn't miss much. There's also a section hidden away in the common questions category that actually gives a fairly decent explanation into how to play the game. It's basically an extended instruction booklet that simultaneously has more and less information at the same time. For example, some objects are possible, some are not. Some objects you can jump on, some you cannot. Some enemies you can avoid, some you cannot. You, you see what I mean? Anyway, the majority of the website can be viewed on the Wayback Machine, so of course I'll leave all necessary links in the description. That about wraps this video up. What can you say about the legacy of Bonita Quest? Well, not all that much really, seeing as it's all but faded from public conscious dooms to a life of thrift store bargain bins and mediocre YouTube videos. All in all, it may not have been anything on the scale of Pepsi Man or Burger King Sneak King, but at least for a while in the early 2000s, it was super popular amongst Kiwi kids and probably helped sell a whole heap of little bananas. Thank you all very much for watching this video. I really hope you managed to find some entertainment or enjoyment out of this, and I'll catch you guys next time. Also, a very special thank you to Arcade and Luminous for informing me about the editing software DaVinci Resolve. That's what I use to make this video, and it's a really great software, very professional, but unfortunately I will never use it again because the laptop I was borrowing to make this video just could not run it. So every single thing I did would take forever and every second thing I did would cause the software to crash. I'm not exaggerating, this took five days. So yeah, back to good old fashioned Windows Movie Maker. Howard. 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 This better be good. You know the black bits and bananas? Are they tarantulas eggs? Please don't speak to me ever again in your life.